Welcome to Fort Bend Tutoring. Today we will be teaching you on a new subject of which you might find interesting. Please put your cigarette down and pay attention for a minute. Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Mr. Witt with Fort Bend Tutoring and today we'll be talking about factoring quadratic trinomials part 3. So these problems that we'll be looking at today are still in the format of AX squared plus BX plus C, where A does not equal to 1, and so therefore we will be using the AC method just like in part 2. However, the product, that AC method, this A times C is going to give you a value that's really, really big, all right? Now keep in mind that the sign of the largest factor will still be the sign of your middle term, and that this last term sign will tell you whether or not you add or subtract to get the middle coefficient. So remember to analyze your experience expression before you factor every single time. All right, so let's take a look at our first example for today. All right, let's check it out. In problem number one, we have 12x squared plus 35x plus 18. Your first step, as always, in any factorization problem is to look for the greatest common factor. So do you have a value, a variable, something in common with all three terms that you see in front of you other than one? The answer to that, no. We can't factor out anything. So therefore, we're going to use the AC method. However, check this out. If I multiply 12 times 18, that's going to give me a value over 100. And ladies and gentlemen, that's my limit, 100. I'm very, very familiar with all the factors from 100 on down. Yeah, You start getting over 100 and my factorization gets real weak. Okay, So what I do instead is I add an extra step to my process when I'm using the AC method here. So what I'll do is I'll just look at the prime numbers of the first coefficient and the last coefficient. What do I mean by that? I'm going to use the factor tree, mm -hmm, or whatever method you prefer for the prime factorization, to find the factors of 12. So the prime factorization of 12 is going to be 2 times 2 times 3. Mm -hmm. The prime factorization of 18 is going to be 2 times 3 times 3. So what I'm looking for is I'm looking for any combination of these prime numbers that will give me two factors that will add to give me 35. If I were to group all the 2's together, 2 times 2 times 2, I would end up with 8. All right. If I multiply 3 times 3 times 3, in other words all the 3's, I'll get 27. All right. And when I add 8 and 27, ladies and gentlemen, that gives me 35. That's exactly what I need. So once again, I didn't list all the factors of my master product, the result of 12 times 18 in this case, because that's going to take me over 100. I'm not familiar with all the factors over 100. Okay? I can't do it. So what I use is the prime factorizations to help me out here. That way I can focus my energies into finding factors that will add to what I need, and that is the middle terms coefficient. So here, just by simply grouping all the 2's together and grouping all the 3's together, I was lucky enough on that first try to get two factors that actually added to what I needed. That was the 35. Now, of course, it's not going to always work out perfectly like that. Well, your first attempt will give you what you need, but at least you'll be bound to using only the prime factors that you see before you. All right, so that being the case, let's continue factoring out this problem. So just like part two of this series, go ahead and open up two sets of parentheses. So I'll take the square root of x squared, so I'll use an x for the first term in both sets of parentheses and I'll be using these two factors that add to give me 35. I'm always going to lead with my largest factor which is 27 in this case and the other one is 8 and the sign of the largest factor must be the sign of the middle term so my 27 is positive and because I need to add to get 35 that 8 must also be positive as well. So remember your next step is to divide by that leading terms coefficient. So 27 and 8 will both be divided by 12. After that, I'll simplify. 27 and 12 can both be reduced by 3. So I'm going to end up with 9 fourths inside the parentheses and for the 8 and 12 I can reduce both of those numbers by 4. So 4 goes into 8 twice and 4 goes into 12 three times. All right, there we have it. From there, any remaining denominators will go in front of the variable, just like so. All right, so our answer is going to be 4x plus 9 times 3x plus 2. All right, and that's our answer there. Let me put a red box around it. There we go. All right, that's what we got so far. Let's see what the next problem is going to be. Problem number two. 
For problem number two, I have 22k squared minus k minus 48. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, the product of 22 and 48 is a number I'm not familiar with. I'm not. So instead, I'm going to use the prime factors to help me solve this problem. So the prime factorization of 22 is going to be 2 times 11. Mm -hmm. The prime factorization of 48 is going to be 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. And what I'll do from here is I'm looking for two factors from these prime factors that will subtract to give me 1. That's what I'm looking for. All right. So let me start off with what's the obvious for me, and that is to multiply all the twos together. All right. That's always generally going to be my first guess at this, ladies and gentlemen, is to go ahead and multiply all of the like factors together if I have large groups of them. So I have 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, in other words, 2 to the fifth power, and I'm going to end up with 32 as a result. Okay. 32. Then what's left over is 11 times 3. 11 times 3 is 33. And it just so happens that 33 minus 32, check it out, it's 1. So now that I have my factors, I'm going to open up two sets of parentheses. My first term inside is going to be the square root of k squared, which is going to be k. I'll be using 33, that largest factor, and then 32. The sign of the largest factor will always be the sign of your middle term's coefficient, so the 33 must be negative. Because I'm subtracting, 32 must be positive. Then from there, I'll be dividing both the 33 and the 32 by that leading coefficient, which is 22. All right, so this is what we have thus far. Then I'm going to simplify. That's the next step. So bringing down my k, I notice that 33 and 22 can both be reduced by 11. So that's going to give me 3 halves. Looking at 32 and 22, both of these values can be reduced by 2. So I'll bring down my k plus 16 elevenths. All right. Your remaining denominators will go in front of the variable. All right. So here I end up with 2k minus 3 times 11k plus 16. Just like that. And that's the answer. That's it. Done and done. 2k minus 3 times 11k plus 16. And there you go. I hate this 3. I'm going to fix it. I must fix it before I go on. All right, we got to make this right. All right, that's a better 3. It's a better 3. Okay, I, I can be happy with that. So 2k minus 3 times 11k plus 16, and that's your answer. Remember to check your work. All you got to do is multiply this back together, go ahead and fold it together, and there you have it. Let's go on to the next problem, shall we? Problem number 3. I have 15f squared plus 44f minus 36. I know I won't be using the simpler version of the AC method because 15 times 36 is a number I'm not familiar with. If this number is over 100, ladies and gentlemen, I'm just not going to list the factors of them. I don't know them, okay? So what I can do is use the prime factorizations of the first coefficient and the last coefficient. That one right there. Okay, so here we are. The factorization of 15 is going to be 3 times 5. The factorization of 36 is going to be 2 times 2 times 3 times 3. So I need a combination of these factors that would subtract to give me 44. All right, so that's what I need. So what I'm thinking of right now is, hmm, if I take all of the uh, threes here, that's just going to give me 27. That's not going to be big enough. Yeah, I won't be able to do anything with that. So let's try something else instead. Let us see what happens with 3 times 5, which is 15, and 15 times 4. There you go. That gives me 60, right? 15 times 4, that's 60. So I have 60, and what's left is going to be 9. Well, that gives me a value of 51 when I subtract it, so that's not what I need for the two factors. All right, let's try a different combination. All right. Oh, okay, let's try this. Let's say I try the 27. That's 3 times 3 times 3 times 2. That'll give me 54. So we'll have 54, and then what's left over, see, I use 3 times 2 times 3 times 3, and that gave me 54. What's left over is 5 times 2, which is 10. All right, check it out.
When subtracting, 54 minus 10, that gives me 44. Bingo. Done. So I'm going to go ahead and open up my parentheses now, knowing that I've found the factors that I need to use, which is 54 and 10. So I'm going to use the square root of f squared, which is f, and then the factors that I'm going to use, 54 and 10. The sign of the middle term's coefficient must be the sign of my largest number, which is going to be 54. So it has to be positive. Because these two factors are going to subtract to give me 44, the 10 needs to be the opposite sign. So I need to have a negative 10 there. From there, remember, we'll divide both of these values by that leading coefficient, which is 15. Yep. From here, I'm going to simplify next. So simplifying 54 and 15, I can reduce both of these numbers by 3. 3 goes into 54 18 times. And 3 goes into 15 5 times. From there, I can simplify the 10 and the 15. 10 and 15 can both be reduced by 5. So I'll bring down this F. 5 goes into 10 twice. And 5 goes into 15 3 times. Once I have this, ladies and gentlemen, remember that any remaining denominators will go in front of the variable. So here we'll have 5f plus 18 times 3f minus 2, and this is going to be my answer. That's it. Ladies and gentlemen, remember, I'm going to the extremes of finding the prime factorizations because I'm just not that familiar with whatever this number would have been if I would have multiplied 15 times 36. That number is way too big for me, all right? So I use the prime factors to break the number down. Just saying. Mm -hmm. It's a lot faster and it's very accurate if you do it just like that each time. All right, let's check out the next problem. In problem number four, I have 49 into the fourth power minus 14 into the third power minus 35 n squared. Remember, you always start by looking for your greatest common factor first. And in this problem right here, you do have one. It's going to be 7 n squared. Notice that all three terms could be divided by 7 and the smallest exponent on your common variable of n is 2. So we factor out 7 n squared. What that's going to leave for us is going to be 7 n squared minus 2n minus 5. All right, and that's what I have right there. That's it. So after factoring out the GCF of 7n squared, you're left with this. Okay, great. Now, I can do this, ladies and gentlemen, because I know that 7 times 5 is 35. Okay, I know the factors are 35. That's just going to be 1 times 35, and that'll also be 5 times 7. I would be looking for two factors of 35 that would subtract to give me 2. So in this case, it would be 7 and 5. All right, so let's go ahead and bring down that GCF of 7 and squared. Open up two sets of parentheses, and from there, I'm going to take the square root of n squared, which is n. That'll be the first term in each binomial, and I'll need a 7 and a 5. Because the sign of my middle term is negative, my 7 must be negative. Then, since I'm subtracting, the 5 must be positive because unlike signs will subtract. Your next step is to divide by that leading coefficient of your trinomial, which is 7. So I'm going to divide both of these values by 7. And the following, you'll bring down that GCF of 7 n squared. Simplifying 7 over 7, you'll end up with 1, right? And the 7 and the denominator will go in front of the variable n. So I'll have 7 n plus 5. And this is my answer right here, ladies and gentlemen. Done and done. All right, we didn't have to really worry about using the prime factorization in this problem, ladies and gentlemen, because after we factored out the GCF of 7n squared, these coefficients became very, very manageable. All right, so that works out just fine. Let's go ahead and put a red box around it. And that's it. Okay, done and done. All right, let's look at our next example. Okay, problem number five. We have 20x squared plus 13x minus 15. Once again, the product of 20 and 15 is going to be way over 100. Yeah, it'll be over 100. So therefore, I'm not going to factor it by finding that master product. Instead, what I'll do is I'll just simply find the prime factorizations of 20, which is going to be 2 times 2 times 5, and the prime factorization of 15, which is going to be 3 times 5. All right. That being the case, I'm looking for a combination of these prime numbers that will subtract to give me 13. All right. Well, check this out. I'm going to start off by looking at the fives first. I know that 5 times 5 is 25. And what's left over would be 2 times 2 times 3, which is going to give me 12. That's it. 
25 minus 12 is 13. That's exactly what I need. So let's move ahead and open up two sets of parentheses here. The square root of x squared is going to be x. I'll be using 25 and 12. And since the middle term's coefficient is positive, I'll need a positive here. Since I am subtracting to get 13, then what you'll do is you'll use the opposite sign of the positive 25, which will be negative. Okay? So from there, we'll divide by that leading coefficient, which is 20. And of course, your next step is to simplify. So simplifying 25 and 20 by 5, you'll end up with x plus 5 fourths. Simplifying 12 twentieths, you'll end up reducing both 12 and 20 by 4, and you'll end up with 3 fifths. Once we have this, any remaining denominators will go in front of the variable. So that means this 4 goes in front of the x, and this 5 goes in front of that x. You'll end up with 4x plus 5 times 5x minus 3. All right, so there you have it. So ladies and gentlemen, this is Mr. Witt with 4 Ben Tutoring, and this concludes factoring quadratic trinomials, the hard ones, right? When the products get over 100. So make sure you get your repetition in so that this process becomes easier and easier for you. And once again, our Simply Math workbook number 12 will give you more exercises to practice just what we were talking about today. And ladies and gentlemen, if you find yourself on Facebook, go ahead and like our Facebook page. This is Mr. Witt. Peace. We appreciate your time. Don't you want to learn mathematics the correct way? You need a foundation. Do not just be guessing at your numbers. Contact us today. Look us up on your Facebook at Fort Bend Tutoring. Learn it well, honey.